The United States has the highest rate of incarceration in the Western world. And this large scale does mean a significant numbers of wrongly incarcerated individuals. Statisticians can help, though. And to tell us how, I'm joined now by Iowa State's Alicia Caracchetti. Thank you so much, Alicia, for joining us. Thank you for having me. This is great. Tell us why wrongful incarceration is a statistician's problem. So one in 20 individuals that is incarcerated is actually innocent. And so one of the reasons is uh, faulty forensic science or exaggerated claims from forensic analysis that sometimes are presented in court. And so statisticians can help uh, by working to develop better methods for analyzing forensic evidence, uh, coming up with probabilistic approaches to forensic evidence. And there's many different ways we can contribute to reducing the, the chances of a wrongful incarceration. How long have statisticians been focused on this? And tell us what happened in 2009 that really impacted this line of work. Forensic sciences is really interesting. It's been traditionally a very insular discipline where uh, most of the forensic methods that we're using today are developed in crime labs and by law enforcement. The exception was the uh, forensic analysis of DNA. This is when statisticians started to get involved in forensic sciences. And the 2009 report that the National Academy of Sciences put out was kind of like a summary of all that questioning that had been happening. And it laid bare the deficiencies and the gaps in the statistical foundations of most forensic disciplines. And so that was a really important uh, report because it sort of opened everybody's eyes to the fact that statisticians had a lot to contribute. Mm -hmm. What makes working with forensic data both challenging and interesting? I work mostly on what's called pattern comparison disciplines. And that would be things such as latent print analysis, comparison of handwritten documents, uh, footwear, prints, uh, ballistics, you know, all this kind of things. You can think of those data as uh, data that can be represented as an image. And so much of the work is uh, coming up with uh, methods to compare images, uh, one of which may be very contaminated by noise and background effects and you know, partially observed prints and so on. So it's really very challenging. Can you give us an example of an interesting solution you found? Recently with a couple of my collaborators, uh, Heike Hoffman and Susan Vanderplas, we published a paper on the Proceedings of the National Academies that goes, you know, takes a very, very simple concept in statistics, which is the issue of multiple comparisons and how that erodes overall confidence in a decision, and, and applied it to the analysis of two marks that, uh, that examiners sometimes carry out and argue that the confidence with which these examiners reach a conclusion should be probably much lower than it actually is. I'm giving a talk today, uh, one of the medallion lectures. It'll be an overview of forensic sciences and statistics. So if you're interested, go. The website of, what, of the center I direct, www.forensicstats.org, has a lot of material and a lot of data and a lot of code and a lot of uh, links to other sites. Thank you so much. It was wonderful to talk with you. Thank you so very much.